I think it's safe to say that when the Republican Party sends their candidates, they're not sending their best. They're sending guys with a lot of problems. I'm not, I'm not even I'm referencing Trump's little line. Uh, so the two debates occurred last night, and I watched both of them. Well, one actually occurred, probably, I wouldn't say last night, probably in the afternoon, around the morning hours, 2 o'clock, somewhere around that. Yeah, afternoon. Um, and I was really amazed by the sheer realization I had and just seeing seven people at once, ten people at once. You know, that's not even all of them. They had, they had so many, they had to split them up. And I had a little running joke where I said that during this election, uh, before any of the candidates even announced that they were running, this person is going to be the, the 20th person to announce their candidacy, so they're going to have a whole giant list, a coliseum of candidates just sitting together. Um, I mean, it, it really was overcrowded, which I cannot say the same for the first debate that only had about, must be 30 or 40 people just standing around or sitting around. I mean, they they dropped the ball on that first one in terms of attendance because nobody was there and it was it was only pointed out to me uh, after just seeing it re-air it, it, it's, it's embarrassing it was embarrassing and I would have hated to have had to be sitting up in there or found some way of sitting in there when I look around and nobody else is here listening to these people I mean it's utterly disrespectful another thing perpetuated by Fox News the kids' table, basically, as they a accurately described it. Um, well, not Fox News, the station, but other people. Now, in the regular debate, you had a abundance of name dropping, predictably President Obama, but also Hillary Clinton. They they just said their names over and over again. I mean, you might as well not even call it the presidency anymore. You might as well just call it. Obama's office because that's exactly what they treated it as. They don't even they don't say when I'm president I'll do this I'll do that I'll fix my predecessor with none of that it's just Obama Obama Obama. It, it got really annoying real fast. Because when you sit over here and you listen to these people and you expect them to talk about the issues and what makes them stand out, you're not really standing out if you keep repeating the person's name over and over again. You know, you, you, they're talking about a different kind of presidency, but then you still have this thing where you want to link Obama to you and just keep bringing his name up over and over again. That's what I became more uh, concerned with, the idea that they almost had this obsession with him. Obama, Obama, Obama. But, you know, it's it's understandable to an extent. Again, they want to replace him, and I guess it's probably due to the fact there were so many of them saying his name over and over again. But when you consider the fact that there were, what, 10 people on stage? And the only person they could think to talk about out of his whole cabinet, out of anybody, was Clinton. When there are another four Democrats running, currently anyways. It's really kind of annoying. I mean, I read uh, Ted Cruz's book, and he, he just, at the end of it, he starts talking about her. And it's kind of disturbing how they've all basically become fixated with stopping this one person. I mean, what if one day during this whole process, Sanders gets to the point where he's ready to get the nomination? Your efforts in trying to stop the Democrat nominee from winning by focusing solely on Clinton is going to just impede all of you. I understand she's the party front runner. I understand that she's the one everybody's looking to. But you, know, you don't need to focus on, on one person. only person they could, they could focus on without me being kind of confused by or otherwise a little disturbed by is Obama because he's the immediate president right before them, whoever gets it and whoever wins, be they Democrat or Republican. Um, and I gotta say, out of these candidates, the only one, because I, I really thought Trump had a chance until seeing the 32% that actually would vote for him, uh, which isn't even... <laughs> That's terrible. It's not even half the country. The only one that has a real shot out of all of the Republicans, out of all 17 of them, of actually getting the nomination and then winning the election is Kasich. Because he, 
is able to essentially and very gracefully, I guess, appeal to a broader demographic and not be solely focused on what pertains to him. He's able to go and link issues together, whereas these other candidates are not doing that. They're all just trying to pander to one group. You have um, Trump going over there and making statements about illegal immigrants, and that's obviously going to annoy a lot, not just in the Hispanic community, but also with minorities who, <laughs> you know, might might feel like they're being treated as uh, foreign or alien, as some might uh, do things to them that they feel makes their citizenship almost secondary to other people. You know, I, I can't even begin to understand why you would running as President of the United States only appeal to one group. It, it makes no sense to me. I wouldn't be surprised if that 30% was the entire, not entire, but a majority of the uh, white older males or European older males because it, it's the only thing that uh, even makes sense. So my favorite moments of the debate were when Christy and Rand Paul got into their little shouting match. Christy started said some something, something. You 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 saw the committee blowing blowing out hot air. <laughs> um, and then when Rand Paul went up against Trump and he said, "Great, I didn't say that. You're having a hard time tonight." <laughs> I just I, I felt like I felt kind of bad for him, but you know he he was trying to establish himself because he's not doing as well as uh, Trump. He's actually kind of in the middle in that group. If the arranging of the the places where everyone was stationed was anywhere to go by Trump being first and Walker and Bush being third and second, I think. Um, I think, I'm trying to remember, I think Huckabee was four and Carson was fifth and I think Cruz was sixth. But regardless of the order, that's why uh, Rand Paul went after them like that. He was trying to establish himself. All in all, this uh, whole debating process really doesn't you know we're because half of them aren't even they have no chance i'm putting it to you like that because you have trump who appeals to older white males and you have Kasich who appeals to who can appeal to damn near everybody so it, it's just i only realistically see either trump or Kasich in the nomination i don't i don't think anyone else out of those other 15 have any possible and I and I keep seeing Christie's little ads play on TV. We have a president right now. You know I don't whatever, but I don't think with all those advertisements, with all that, with all that money, he's still not going to be able to mount any successful campaign. He hasn't been able to already. That's why he just barely got into this. And they're over here talking about they cheated him out. They cheated um, Perry out of being in the top ten. So I don't I don't think he has any of them have any chance except Kasich and Trump and Trump has no no shot at in my opinion in the general election because you have only 32 percent and oh yeah I'd vote for you that's not even half I mean not only are Republicans in uh, the majority of them anyways are not not Republicans conservatives failing to, to get with the times with supporting same-sex marriage and other laws but they're also Failing Algebra 2.